In this video, we'll be studying American Kempo blocking set two. Hello, I'm Andy Seaton, Senior Instructor, Combat Fusion Martial Arts. So in this video, we're going to be studying blocking set two. Now, as usual, we'll look at the blocking set in its entirety from two different perspectives, first fast and then slow. So we've had a good look at blocking set two. We're more familiar with its component parts and how it moves. We'll now look at it even closer. We're gonna break it down in this next section and we'll be talking about such things as the outer rim principle, the quadrant zones theory, and also no-go zones. That's areas you should avoid placing your block if at all possible. So let's get into this next section. So the first subject we should discuss is the outer rim. This is the egg-shaped area that goes from your eyebrows to your groin and is as wide as your shoulders. This is the area in which we should endeavour to confine our defensive moves. The outer rim looks like a straight line when viewed from the side. When a rectangle is placed around the outer rim, it appears to show four areas of sanctuary. Whilst areas of sanctuary are generally something that will give us aid, in this case we should avoid moving our defences into these areas of no-go. We will go deeper into the subject of no-go zones later. The outer rim can be divided into two halves and then again subdivided into four quarters. This is the frontal visualisation of the quadrant zones theory when the outer rim is superimposed over it. When viewed from the side, we can see how the outer rim reaches back towards our structure. At this point, we have four quadrants. The upper right, the upper left, the lower right, and the lower left. These four quadrants can then be subdivided into eight sections, four to the front and four to the rear. The quadrant zones theory is similar to the dimensional zones theory. However, the quadrant zones theory primarily concerns itself with areas to defend rather than areas to attack. Looking at the right upward block, it can be seen that it is protecting the upper right front quadrant, whereas the right inward block is protecting the upper left front and rear quadrants when defending below the elbow to the inside of an attacking arm. Should you incorrectly defend above the elbow to the inside of an attacking arm, there is the risk of the attacking arm bending around the inward block to strike to the rear upper left quadrant. Progressing on to the outward extended block, it can be seen to defend the upper right front and rear quadrants when defending below the elbow to the inside of an attacking arm. Should we also make the same error here by blocking above the elbow when on the inside of an attacking arm, it too has the same potential to curve around the block and strike this time to the rear right section. Going from the outward extended block to the downward block, it can be seen that our arm passes through every quadrant to end blocking in the lower right, defending both front and rear sections. From the downward block, we reverse the last sequence, traveling backwards through each quadrant in turn, until our arm is chambered at our hip with a hidden back elbow block. From the back elbow position, the set progresses onto the pushdown block, passing through the top right quadrant to finally defend at the bottom right front section quadrant. 
Now we repeat the same sequence but this time using our other arm. You will also note when performed with fluidity not all blocks are evident. At this point we have just completed blocking set 1. Because blocking set 2 is an extension to blocking set 1, it is from this point onwards that we are actually studying blocking set 2. At this point we are studying how to use both arms simultaneously and still pass through all the same quadrant zones as before. On completion of the symmetrical simultaneous blocks, you will note we have also completed the 5 star block set, which is a hybrid of block set 1 and 2. Up until this point our brain has been content. It's been happy to use only one side of our body at a time and absolutely loves the symmetry of both arms together. But now it must contend with the Kempel version of rubbing your stomach whilst simultaneously patting your head. At first this next sequence of blocks can be difficult to acquire due to one side of the body working forward whilst the other side works in reverse. This sequence not only teaches us ambidexterity but also shows examples of different methods of universal blocking. Try practicing this skill set as if you were on a videotape and that videotape is being played forwards and backwards. This will aid your muscle memory locking into place. We now progress by pivoting to our right into our right forward bow towards 230 whilst delivering a right downward block with a left inward block. This is the more traditional universal block. As you can see the outer rim has altered in conjunction with our body position. From the forward bow we now pivot into a right neutral bow to 230 whilst reversing our block position and delivering a universal block to 2 o'clock. By pivoting through a horse stance to a left forward bow to 930, the sequence is repeated off the other side. The set now takes us into using circular blocks with linear blocks. Here we combine an upward block travelling on a circular path with the linear inside downward palm down block. Note how this block crosses our centre line. Compare the inside downward palm down block with this, the inside downward palm up block, which is performed with an upward parry travelling on a circular path. This block should rotate through 180 degrees at the wrist to enable it to comfortably pass the centre line when performed from a horse stance. Pivot once again into a right forward bow to 230, this time executing a right outside downward parry with a left inward parry. Then pivot back to a right neutral bow whilst executing a right outward parry with a left hooking outward parry. Pivot through a horse stance to a forward bow to 930, then repeat this sequence off the other side. Return momentarily to a horse stance facing 12 o'clock, then immediately rise into a left one-legged stance whilst executing a right outside downward parry with a left inward horizontal heel palm parry. Replant your right foot to its point of origin, then repeat the sequence off the other side. On completion, plant your left foot back to 6 o'clock into a right forward bow facing 12 o'clock as you deliver an open-handed downward diagonal cross block, right hand over left. Have your right foot step back to 6 o'clock in line with your left foot to a horse stance facing 12 as you deliver a twin outside downward parries. Follow on with twin palm up outward hooking parries and finally twin push down blocks. Now we will study no go zones. These are areas we should endeavour not to allow our blocks to enter. Entering these areas serve no defensive purpose and will in fact place our safety at risk. The area of no go zones exists outside the outer rim. Think of it as a halo surrounding us. This is the area we should avoid. Starting at the upward block, if it travels upwards through the halo of the no go zone, the protection of our center mass will be missed out. This also increases the likelihood of making contact with an attacking limb directly above our head, where any object that may be being held could potentially drop onto us. The upward block should travel in this case thrusting directly from its point of origin, slightly crossing the center line and avoiding the no go zone halo then travelling on to the upper block, again not violating the halo. If we look at a side perspective, it is obvious the left image has the block going directly up, unlike the right image where it has gone out at an angle. By studying both front and side views of the forward angled upward block, 
it can be seen that although the front view appears not to fully protect our head, the side view shows that that is a misconception. We should view our Kempo like we view the universe. The constellations we see in the night sky only look that way from planet Earth. If we only look at our Kempo from one dimension, we can be fooled into thinking that an error is in fact correct. As with the upward block, the forward leaning position enhances its angle of deflection, thereby moving attacking weapons away. This also illustrates the Kempel principle, to beat action you must meet action, often relayed as meet it, to beat it, or you'll eat it. Proceeding on to the inward block, it can be seen in the left image that the arm has further to travel, unlike the right image which has a more economical path of action. This is a result of the left image starting and ending in the no-go zone, whereas the right image has remained within the outer rim. Another aspect to be aware of is not to over-rotate the torso when in your horse stance. This is an overreach that will affect your stability. Make sure you adhere to the conceptual box when executing your blocks. I have a video already explaining this concept and shall place a link in the description should you wish to view it. Moving on now to the outward extended block, we again can see the greater amount of travel the left image needs going from one part of the no-go zone to another. The left image has deeply violated the no-go zone halo and is in fact just protecting fresh air. Unlike the right image, which is once again adhering to the outer rim and avoiding the halo. From the side view, we can see the right image is once again going out to meet an incoming attack, keeping it at bay. This is also placing your muscle structure into its strongest position to receive the attack. Even with the downward block, there is a considerable amount of travel when the outer rim theory is ignored. By staying within the outer rim, we have less movement so we are more covert, and less travel so we are faster without the need for speeding up. Again, the halo shows to what degree the left image has gone beyond the outer rim. Once again, we see that we are going out to meet an incoming attack, mindful of working within the conceptual box and the outer rim. With the pushdown block, the concepts are very similar to the upward block. From the front, the left image looks to be protecting the groin, whereas the right image appears to be leaving it exposed, and they both appear to be working within the outer rim. Viewing once again from a different perspective, or if you like, a different part of the universe, we see the left image has its block far too close to the groin to prevent impact. Unlike the right image, which once again is going out to meet an incoming attack. We've now looked at blocking set two in its entirety, first slowly, then fast. We've broken it down and looked at it on a component part basis. We've talked about the outer rim principle. We've talked about quadrant zones theory, no grow zones. We've also related to how the blocking set one and five star block set relate to blocking set two being their extension. We are now going to take a quick look at blocking set two done from a neutral bow. Blocking set 2 shown here starting from the left side to facilitate camera angles. So that is some of the things we emphasize when we're teaching blocking set number two at Combat Fusion Martial Arts. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, please like it and give it a share. And don't forget, if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. I'd love to get more subscribers for our channel. So well, this is Andy Seathen, Combat Fusion Martial Arts, saying goodbye.